Welcome to part 12 of this video series on styles of comic book coloring. As you can see, we have this giant image of the Avengers, and we're coloring each person one by one with a different style. Today, we're going to use layer masks, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, as a twist on traditional grab and grad. Now, I've already done a bit of her suit uh, because I had never painted with layer masks in, it's not something I normally do even in Photoshop, but I'm pretty new to Manga Studio and I'd never done this in Manga Studio and I was trying to figure out how it worked. So I'm clicking them on and off here. It, this is a super, for me, it's time intensive, but I can see how it has huge advantages, especially for a really rendered piece, like a cover or something like that. I when you saw me sliding the the saturation slider there each layer of color is completely editable so you're working at the bottom the bottom of the stack you have dark you're going dark to light by value but you can go through and change the the saturation you could add photo filters you can do whatever you want now this works slightly different in mega studio than it does in photoshop in photoshop you're painting with you you put white on any brush on a black masked layer over a solid layer of color and you can throw in whatever textures or whatever you want. It'll work just like painting with a regular brush. In Manga Studio it's a little different that instead of it being a black layer it's an actual transparent layer. So you can just delete the layer or fill with transparent pixels which is the thing under the two colors there. In, in Manga Studio you can paint with transparent pixels which is a necessary feature just due to how the, the brush engine works and in Photoshop it's not ne it's not necessary it's not as necessary I guess because you can use any brush in Photoshop to be uh, an eraser so this was a double challenge I was doing something I'd never done in Manga Studio and something I didn't have a ton of experience with to begin with but for highly stylized pages like a night scene or something like that where a lot of the colors are going to be similar I've employed this before where there's only a couple a couple colors on a page but for a whole person I'd never done it before so here you can see I got the lasso tool and I'm just I'm doing the standard grab and grab thing right I'm just lassoing out and then airbrushing I'm using an airbrush instead of the gradient tool the airbrush is just creating gradients same idea and the I, I spent another 10 or 15 minutes with Psylocke after this video had finished because there were some things I didn't like and it get it got messy in some places and I'm, I'm probably going to go back and clean it up even more but I I do like the look and I love the the ability to change the colors and it makes you know color selection is is so much more important than these little technical things and things like brushes and what I think what I liked most about this image is that it, it it's one of the first coloring styles that we're doing that really fit this art. I mean, this art is very traditional cape and cowl superhero, right? I mean, it's J. Scott Campbell. And with all this painting and all this stuff that we're doing, we're not, we're, most of it has gone pretty far away from, from standard comic book stuff. And because of that, it was nice that it's nice to have a character right in the middle of the image that actually looks how she should look. Like if I were going to color this whole thing, I would use a lot of this sort of, you know, hard edged layered colored things. That's just what I'm used to seeing for, for superheroes. And, uh, if you look on like on her chest and where I'd put the little white bits, it just, it got kind of messy in there because I'm, I'm not completely in control of this method. But uh, I'll, I'll make a separate video exactly on how to do this in Mega Studio because I, I don't think anyone had. And there are a couple videos on it in Photoshop, but they don't go into much detail. There's some subtleties here that you need to understand. And that will be, with the video running fast like this, it's going to be hard for me to, to tell exactly what's going on. Because at a certain point, if you look, I, I'm painting with white on the mask in some places. And then in places that I've unmasked, I'm actually painting on the color or adding texture to the color on the other side. So it's a little confusing. Because so if you're where you see in the in the bottom right, you've got the mask, which is the thing in black that you're just painting white on. 
and whatever area you paint white, whatever pixels become white, or even if they become slightly gray, then it's, you know, it's like a threshold. Then that same value of the color that you've given gets put through. So it doesn't just let perfect pixels through, it actually you can create gradients of that same, the same value, um, or I shouldn't say value, the same saturation, the same color. Uh, and I also create a couple color overlay layers in her hair where I just wanted to add some local color and I didn't want to change necessarily the, the values that I had put in. And so that's sort of a, we'd gone over that in the, in great detail in the cell shading video about what layers can do. So if you want to refer back to that, you can do that. See, I really didn't like the red on the top of her shoulder there. I, I ended up changing that to an orange. The red works as the sun side in her costume, but not on. Now, I made these color choices just by going to an empty layer. And just like you would when you would traditionally paint, that's another cool thing about it. It feels very natural because you go and you, and as you move up in value, you, you know, you're just swiping these colors next to each other and you're creating like a little palette, <laughs> uh, similar to what you do on those color paint sites, like a colorly. I think I've used that one before. Like there are, you know, the paint sites where you get you get to line up the swatches, and it's like, oh, this would be great for a sunroom or whatever. Like you can go to those sites, and you can. I I've done it for. I mean, they're also used for web design. Uh, I've you know I've done it for that, like creating little color palettes, and and you can do that for your for creating comic book characters too, or or just looking finding colors that work nicely together. And I usually do it by just opening up a white page and then scrubbing them next to each other and just creating like a gradient of five all the way up to almost white. And then see here, like on her skin, I've got four color. There's four different colors there, but there's a lot more than that because you're creating like, look at the shadow, the shadow underneath her, the, the, her left collarbone and the shadow all the way over on the right side of her arm. Those are the same color, but they're, you know, one is just lightly airbrushed in, so there's some small gradients all over the place. And here I'm going through, I do, I go through and touch up with a, with an airbrush and just create a bit of softness or darken up the edges. So just her big two areas, her, her suit and her arms is what I did for this, uh, this masking thing. And then I did a more traditional comic book styling on her, on her hair, where I'm just using the airbrush. And outside of a little bit of noisy spray paint that I put in the reflections to look like, to look like reflections, which I don't know if I, if I do this in the video or not, but outside of that, this is all done with an airbrush. I criticize J. Scott Campbell a little. I mean, who's, I mean, there's no reason for, I guess I don't mean criticize. I just don't like how over-sexualized his female characters are sometimes. But I think this drawing of Psylocke is really, really great. She has to be about seven feet tall. It's not a, f I don't think that the perspective is fish-eyed at all. But for some reason, her legs are like six or seven heads tall, which is huge. Which would make Storm like 13 feet tall, but I think they look cool. Or she looks cool. Yeah, so this is like the most classic comic book you get. You just, you get an airbrush, you pick a color. And in her hair, I'm, I'm just shifting between, uh, so all of the dark, the super dark spots in her head are all red. And then the super light spots are all pink and everything else is purple, pretty much, which is sort of a strange hue shift. Normally, what you would see is a hue stepping. As you move, say, up in value, you're moving to the left or the right on the color wheel. Either is acceptable. I mean, for example, it's super, super common for dark blues to be hue shifted towards blue-green on the light side. 
and then also the opposite is true it's super common for greens to hue shift into yellow like look at the hulk the hulk's a great example of that he's he's quite yellow Yeah, these are the really dark spots, and I'm looking for a for a red color. I love it both ways. I love for the the, the deep reds to be the the shadows in purple hair, and the deep purples to be the shadows in in red hair. In comic books, at least, I just think it it looks really fantastic. I don't have any kind of plan while I'm doing this. I'm just trying to make it look comic booky. That's it. I put some really generic screen effects over the sword just to get an idea of what the purple would look like there. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do there, but we'll, I've, I've already I've since deleted that. And the, one of the final videos is going to be finishing layers where we're going to add effects to uh, certain characters. Like for example, Rocket is right there. We'll add a little bit of glow to each one of those lights in the gun. And maybe a little sheen or sticky mess in his teeth or someone's teeth. Just little things, little overlays over the top that really complete an image. And I don't want to do those one by one. I'd rather just do them all in one video. Nothing fancy here, just airbrushing. The reflective sheens in, if you see in her leg right there and her thigh, that's just a white airbrush on top where you go very, very lightly down and then you kind of tap it. That's the technique up where you want the highlight to be and let it get let it swish back and forth and get and get a little messy and then it looks more natural if you go in there and just and just make a circle or tap right in the same spot it just turns into a big ball of light and it doesn't look nearly as organic I missed a couple pieces in this video too. I didn't, I didn't do the bottom. Like her foot is stuck under her, her legs are so long, and they're stuck. One of them stuck up underneath Wolverine. Who I don't even know what to call that style. I called it watercolor. It's the previous video, but really it was just, I was just having fun, and I'm not sure why I pushed record. But once I was done, I really liked it. There's some pixels that are stuck out there under the flats. I don't there I must have accidentally copied them out on another layer and I'll have to go and fix those at some point. I don't know if I'm going to do like a like a glowing effect on one hand or or what.
Again, this is just grab and grab. Here to get that layered look, if you watch, I'm just gra I'm going back to the selection tool and just moving that selection uh, to line up with each crease that was already there, so it kind of looks more natural, I suppose. I don't know. Little finishing touches with the airbrush. There's still probably a little bit of work left to do on her, but I'll poke around on it again tonight, and then you can see the you'll see the finished product in the next video, which will be Storm. And for Storm, we are going to paint with gradient maps, which should be which is something I've never done. I've used gradient maps to to finish images, but that will be a huge learning experience, and I'll probably do that video in real time because. I want you to hear my logic throughout. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.